I've been doing a lot of mathematics these past few days, like a lot, for three days. The last three days, I have been doing mathematics every single day. So I would wake up in the morning and eat breakfast and just do math. Obviously, you know, you have to take breaks and, and do other things, but three days of doing tons of math, it has been an experience. <laughs> it's just been an experience. And, you know, if, you, if, you're, if you're a math student or, or you're a graduate student or you're just a person who just does math for fun and you do a lot of math for a lot of time, something interesting happens. <laughs> so, something interesting happened and it's a little bit weird. So, and I don't know how many hours I was doing math, so I can't give you like a formula. I just know like it was pretty much all day. I, you know, I took some breaks, but I worked on math the majority of the day. So I found out that math makes you really hungry if you do a lot of it. And, and normally I eat quite a bit. Like I'm a big eater. You know, I have a big breakfast. I have a big lunch and a big dinner. You know, I eat, I eat a lot, um, probably too much, but I, I eat a lot. And I find myself like wanting to eat before lunchtime, wanting to eat before dinner time. I find myself looking for snacks. You know, I would work on math for a while and I would get hungry. And it has to do with the brain power. So someone left a comment once on the channel. I don't know if it's true or not. So if you know about this, please let me know if it's true. Someone was saying that the thing about chess players and the calories they burn because they burn more calories because of chess. Like there's been like situations where like chess players are like really thin because they burn, you know, so many calories. I don't know if that's true. So if you know about that, uh, please leave a comment. Anyways, math makes you hungry. So I also thought I would show you this book. It's called Spherical Trigonometry. I've had this book for a long time now, and I've never talked about it. And this is like the forgotten math subject, right? You can't go to a college today and say like, hey, I want to sign up for a spherical trigonometry. <laughs> it doesn't work, right? Because they don't teach this anymore. But you can learn it on your own, right? So I'll leave a link in the description if I can find the book. If I can find it, I don't think I'll be able to. If I can, usually what happens with these old books is like there's only like a few copies. They'll have like one at a really good price and then like the other ones are like super expensive or something. That's the thing with old books that are out of print. Spherical trigonometry by Raymond W. Brink, PhD, the professor of, mathema professor of mathematics in the University of Minnesota, D. Appleton Century Company Incorporated, New York, London. So cool. Like a coffee stain there. I have a coffee stain like this on some of my uh, Calc 2 notes. There, um, I forget what, what example it was. I think it was, it was something with infinite series and it's covered in coffee. I spilled the coffee uh, on the notes in class. And I also spilled them uh, on a student's exam. And so I got coffee all over her test. It was really terrible and all over my notes. She was okay with it. She was really smart. Anyways, let's read the preface. <laughs> this book is a study of right and oblique spherical triangles together with illustrative material which gives interest and reality to the formal work. The theoretical treatment is brief and direct without excessive elaboration but is adequate to answer the questions that present special difficulty to the student. It makes use of his intuitive understanding of space relations and is intended to assist in developing his intuition. Cool. Look at the contents. The geometry of a sphere starts with great circles. It talks about spherical distances, spherical angles, spherical triangles, polar triangles. The earth is a sphere. Wow. Wow, so all kinds of, of stuff here. Then he goes to right spherical triangle, Napier's rule, proof of formulas for a right triangle, species, solution of a right spherical triangle, isosceles and quadrantal triangles. That's this is so cool. It's not that's like you can't like <laughs> you just this is not something that is studied anymore. It's like it's like the forgotten math, right? And there's there's all kinds of math out there. That's a cool thing about math and about collecting math books. You know, you get these cool math books and you find interesting things. The oblique spherical triangle talks about the parts of a spherical triangle, the law of sines, the law of cosine for sides, the law of cosines for angles, formulas for the half angles and formulas for the half sides, Napier's analogies, and then some more stuff there. The celestial sphere, huh, the astronomical triangle. Nice. 
Very cool. Very small book. Very thin. Very thin book. Not a, it's not a big book. And then we have some appendices here. Yeah. Beautiful trigonometry. I just I just got to give it a whiff. This is just too good. Oh, well, I gave it a gentle whiff. Just a very yeah. It's got some particles on it. This is a pretty old book. What's what's the date on this one? I believe it's forty two. I believe this one's from forty two. Let's check. Nineteen forty two. I think we missed it. It must have been the beginning. Really curious now, but I think it's forty two. Yep. Yeah, forty two. Nineteen forty two. That's a Nintendo game, I believe. The geometry of a sphere. Let's read this. Great circles. The following facts are important to the student or agree with his intuition and experience. A sphere is a surface, all points of which are at a common distance from a point called the center. A radius of the sphere is a line segment extending from the center to a point on the surface. The length of a radius is called the radius of the sphere. The diameter of a sphere is a line segment through the center and having its ends on the sphere. The curve of intersection of a sphere made by a plane is a circle. Okay, If the plane passes through the center of the sphere, the section is a great circle. Otherwise, it is a small circle of the sphere. The radius of the great circle is equal to the radius of the sphere, and its center is at the center of the sphere. The pole of a great circle is an end of the diameter of the sphere perpendicular to the plane of the circle. So um, hopefully that made sense. And in, to me, it, you know, it's pretty clear because let's read that again. It, that last paragraph is key, right? So it says the curve of intersection of a sphere made by a plane is a circle, right? And then it says if the plane passes through the center of the sphere, the section is a great circle. All the other ones are small circles talks about spherical distances pretty cool stuff so this used to be taught back in the day some pictures and stuff so it gives you spherical angles all three-dimensional stuff which is you know harder than 2d 3d is always harder because you have to visualize or you know draw things by hand or use software back in these times you know they didn't have you know um, computer generated graphs so I mean I'm pretty sure they just did it all by hand or I don't I don't know how they made these diagrams they must have done something I don't know how this was done in, in 42 it has exercises it has exercises I don't think it has solutions which is unfortunate well it does have answers no it does have answers some of these actually have answers yeah it does have solutions check this out that's really cool. Look at this. Exercise two, and see it has the answers to every problem. <laughs> it's pretty awesome, right? Yeah. A lot of older books do that. It's it's a lot of the modern books that only have the odd numbered answers. I made a video on that, giving uh, my opinion on why math books, um, you know, why some don't have answers and some have all the answers. And there's all kinds of you know, opinions. That's why it's good to have a lot of books. That's one of the reasons I have so many books, right? If all math books had answers, then <laughs> you know you have all the answers. Um, a lot of times when you're learning a difficult subject, it's it's really good to get more than one book because if your book has almost no answers, um, you know, it's hard to check your work. Also, you get different explanations for those difficult subjects. So the oblique spherical triangle. Neat. Let's go to the celestial one. That's the last one, right? That's the one that's the less common one. That's the one that, uh, ooh, really a lot of damage there in the book. The celestial sphere. Wow, that looks really intense. It's like... Chapter four, the celestial sphere. As we look at the sky, the heavenly bodies appear to lie on the surface of an immense celestial sphere with the observer at the center. Because in size, the earth is negligible compared with the radius of the celestial sphere the Earth itself can be taken as the center. Wow. Wow, isn't that cool? Although the Earth and Observer together are thus reduced to a single point, the aspect of the sky does depend on the position of the Observer on the Earth and on the time of observation. In order to describe the position of a given star on the celestial sphere, as an Observer sees it at a given moment, we introduce certain coordinate systems on that sphere similar 
to the system of latitude and longitude used for the Earth. Neat, right? So they introduce some other things there. Wow. A really cool book, right? You can learn a lot with this. And it's just, it's fun. You know, you sit down one day, you're, you're bored, and you open the book, and you have a cup of tea, and you sit by the fire, and, or start a fire. I don't know. It just sounds good. But yeah. Spherical trigonometry, the forgotten math subject. I'm curious, have you, have you, have you ever heard of this? If you're watching this video, um, have you ever heard of spherical trigonometry? Um, do you know about it? You know what it's used for? Um, yeah. Leave a comment in the comment section below. And I'll try to find the book. I will um, leave a link in the description if I can find it. Until next time, good luck and take care.